Hello, and welcome to Daily Work Remote Strategies, where we talk about what's on your mind during these coronavirus times or anything at all. Today, we have a few questions, or you can ask us questions. Let me tell you who's here with you. I'm Senya Maiman. You see me every day. Sandy Lewis, as I've told you before, Sandy Lewis is pretty much like having the whole HR department here. So Sandy, it's any question that you might have. She's run HR departments at companies of various industries, including technology and bio. So you've got Sandy, who's HR. Kelly is a coach who has also been a nurse. So here you have coaching and nursing together. So if you have well-being questions, feel free to bring them up, as well as executive coaching questions. So we're thrilled to be here with you, and I will start off with the first of our two questions. Feel free to put questions in at any point, and we will get to them today. Hi, Sandy. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. Hi. <laughs> okay, so the first question, and actually, uh, it, it, Kelly, this has been going on all the time. It wasn't because you were on specifically, and you have your uh, nursing background, your PhD in nursing. People have been asking, while people have been on this call this week, people have been asking, what should I be doing with tiredness? I am feeling tired, I'm feeling drained, I'm feeling exhausted. What should I do with this kind of tiredness? Obviously, I don't want to be feeling this way, but what should I or could I do? Let me go to Sandy first. Yeah, I think it's, um, first of all, accepting it <laughs> and then looking at what, what, are, what are our habits right now? Are we staying up too late? Are we drinking too much coffee or alcohol or whatever things we might be wanting to drink during now? Uh, eating too much sugar. So I, I kind of think I would just start with the body first and then look at what are the pressures. When I get really tired, usually I'm telling myself something or I'm pressuring myself in some way. It's kind of a defense. So mm -hmm. kind of look at your whole sphere might be my suggestion. Mm -hmm. So start with the food and, the, and, the, and what you're doing with your body, but also looking if you're creating unnecessary pressure on yourself, mm -hmm. putting unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kelly, what would you add? Yeah. So um, I er totally agree with Sandy about checking in with what you're drinking and eating. And um, it's a fallacy that if we drink alcohol, it'll help us sleep at night. It doesn't. And it actually detracts from our sleep and it interrupts our sleep. And um, while it's a soothing activity, it's not really a self-care activity. Um, the other is, you know, if you need a nap, take it. Mm. Nap. It's good for us. And it helps our creativity and our productivity and just kind of decompresses. And it's just then, then be careful not to, to do it too late or too long because then it will disrupt your nighttime sleep. Um, but, and I love how Sandy said it is to first accept, you know, and have that self-compassion that I am, I'm tired and acknowledging it. And then, you know, asking yourself kind of, what do I need? And sitting with that for a minute, because sometimes it is something internal that we need to get out because we're trying to compress it down all day long. Um, I know when there's been times during this time that I've really been out of sorts, but I don't want to show it to my family because I want to be strong for them. I'm so tired by the end of the day because I've held it all. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so check in with yourself if you're, if you're expressing it and talking with your family or, or whomever you're with um, and so that you're not suppressing it. So part of what you're saying is when, if you were to check in with yourself and say, what do I need? You might get back the answer of, I actually need to get this load off my chest. I need to talk with someone. Mm -hmm. I need to express it. Or I need to take a walk. Actually, I haven't moved out of my chair. <laughs> or I need, you know, I need to eat something fresh. Or I need to call a friend. But, you know, ask yourself what you really need, what it, what it needs, and listen. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of times we're working on what other people need or what the meetings on our calendars are. So it sounds to me like what you're saying is even between those meetings, as you're mm -hmm. figuring out what your next, just keep checking in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even set a timer for it, you know, to do the Pomodoros, you know, um, the 25 minute and then a five minute break. And that five minute break, go to the bathroom, get water, stretch, and then come back and you'll feel a little you know, lifted and even set the timer so that you do get out of the chair because 
you know, people are sitting for a very long time because they don't have the water coolers to go to, <laughs> yeah. right? You know. Um. <clears throat> Yeah. So listen to yourself. Check in with yourself. I was smiling when you said the wine bit. And I, I have read that, but I was smiling because I thought you're going to make a few people on this call a little not as happy telling them to <laughs> necessarily have wine before bed. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not saying you can't have wine. And I'm not saying I don't have a little bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we think, well, that'll help us that it kind of because it could, numbs us, right? And we think that's going to help us sleep. And I I thought that for a very long time. <laughs> well, so when I started taking that out, I slept better. So let me ask you specifically because I want to give people practical things. When before falling asleep, if I if my bedtime is ten p.m., which is great if your bedtime is ten p.m. If my bedtime is ten p.m., when should I stop having alcohol? You want me to give you a time? <laughs> yeah, should it be 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 9.30 p.m.? Is it 6 p.m.? <laughs> um, I think it's more around the quantity. Oh, don't over drink before bed. I get right. it. Okay. Yeah, and, and I do think, though, if I can add, I think there is, I remember seeing somewhere, there is kind of a cycle where it's sort of, it's a relaxer and then it's a stimulant. And mm -hmm. so somehow three hours in my head comes in so i would say earlier sooner right like kelly says don't mm -hmm. drink a ton and have it earlier you know that nightcap and i know okay. when i used to do that three in the morning mm -hmm. wide awake so <laughs> there's a cycle ready to change the world at 3 a.m oh, <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> uh, and uh one other thing that i wanted a little specification if, if you have a kelly or sandy is on the naps because we've heard about it but is this the kind of thing where you should take a 20 minute power nap or should you take a one hour power nap or should you listen to your body? What's, do you have recommendations on that? I do. Um, and I don't know if it's a rebound, somewhere that, but if you take a, a nap like longer than an hour or so, they say 20 to 30 minutes is a great, you know, like it's a power nap. But if you take it and you feel, actually you feel groggier, you know, so it's kind of, you got to decide, right? But like an hour, or two hours, it's almost worse for you and your productivity and your sleepiness. I set a 15 minute so, alarm, 15 mm -hmm. to 20 minutes. Usually it's 15 minutes, but then I went that extra five, but mm -hmm. that can be really refreshing for me because there's times that you just have to. And if I can add on to what Kelly said earlier too, that I love so much when you said, if I'm feeling like I have to be strong for my family, my employees, my employer, whatever it is all day and how draining that is. And, and so we don't always acknowledge that. So sometimes a nap is needed. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a distraction that we have to do and it's kind of a cry for help. So I love when you talk about that. What if I just talk about this? And then we might find out that our bosses didn't realize that they're putting so much pressure on us or mm -hmm. you know what? we don't have to cook dinner every single night and, and wash the dishes. We are not asking for help because we're powering it through. And sometimes people don't offer because we're so busy being um, in power and in control. I know I used to fall into that myself. So talking can decrease some of that pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I just heard a, a quote from Catherine, actually, who both of you know, yesterday, literally yesterday, and I wrote it down on my wall about what you just said, Sandy. So I'm looking at my wall. When you do too much, other people don't discover ways they could fill those spaces. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, Whoa. I love that. That is brilliant. <laughs> I think all of us had a collective like, oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I'll add one more comment to the ones that you're saying about how to, if we're feeling tiredness. One other thing that we may not be noticing is we're feeling tiredness, emotional tiredness. Yes. Whatever that may be, we may be having more serious conversations with our colleagues or with our kids or with our spouses. I mean, death is in the air. This is, the topics are, they're, they're heavy. Or even the, the uncertainty, which is my next question, but really just these are not run of the mill or superficial things. And that tiredness, we forget that it has a, a physical, I wouldn't say toll, but a, a physical reaction or effect. I think toll is a good word, Sonia. Really? I think it, it is very weighty and, um, and it's up and down, right? Like I'll have a day that I'm like, oh my gosh, I am spot on. And the next day I'm like, whoa, what, what day is this? <laughs> Absolutely. Right? 
Kelly, and you're saying you have a day like that. I've talked to people and I felt this too. Sometimes they have an hour like that. Like every hour is, I'm running the world. Whoa, I'm under a, a big pile of quicksands. Yeah, I was going to say that, Cynthia, but I didn't want you to think I was manic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm day. It is natural. Yeah, yeah. What is that quote I said, John Kabat-Zinn? You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. Yes, and, and I love that. It's just, oh, every, sometimes it's every hour. And I think with that, there's that weight, you know, it's, there's a collective grief going on, right? So we're showing up and doing our thing and then that's out there. So that's a lot of energy that I don't think we're able to feel regularly. We, we can't feel it readily or we would all be lying on the carpet in a fetal position. So, you know, it, there's effort that it takes to stay focused now that we yeah. didn't always have, I think, for me. Certainly. That's a fantastic point. It's almost like there's this bubble. I mean, like, that's the pressure, and it's pushing in, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I noticed, too, that, so I'm working at home with my husband here, and he is massively productive, and he has the uncanny ability to totally block and get to work. It's like I've never seen anybody do what he does. And I just want to caution people that the tiredness can come from compare and despair as well, right? Because as I'm going up and down the stairs to my office, because I'm having some FOMO, because my granddaughter's here, and he, she's four months and cute, and I want to be with her. And when I'm doing that, and I look over at him, and he's just, and I'm like, oh, I'm such a loser, you know? And, you know, or why can't I be like that? And, oh, I'd be so much better if I was that way, right? And, and that uh, it fatigues us. And so be careful who you're comparing yourself to and maybe instead compare yourself, you know, from the moment before, <laughs> not even the day before, but, you know, um, to try to just kind of yeah. yourself. Yeah. Good point. George Valiant, who has studied people over time, says one of the healthiest comments he's ever heard somebody say is a person who was 80 years old and came off a, a tennis game, was playing a tennis game and came off and said, hey, not bad for an 80 year old. Yeah. <laughs> and George says it's exactly just like you said, Kelly, compare your, yourself with yourself five minutes ago. How are, how are you doing? Switching gears, coaches. So another question we've been hearing all week is about this uncertainty. And just practically, uh, different states and counties are saying, yes, everything's about to open up. No, there's going to be a second wave and nothing's opening up till the new year. Universities, I mean, we see this all in the news. And there's this wave of uncertainty that people have been asking us about in the questions this week. What should we all do? I'm going to pass on this one until I can think about it. It's a big question. Mm. I think first to acknowledge that that is where you are, you know, the uncertainty of it and kind of name your emotion you're having so that you know, to take some power away from it instead of sitting with it and letting it bubble inside. I'm, I'm a big, I'm big about communicating, obviously. Um, so rather than letting it bubble, because if it's the truth that that's where you are, then acknowledge it. Because you, then you can move from there and take action, but without acknowledging that that's where you are. Um, I think that's the kind of that first step. Oh, I love that. And then from that, I'm thinking, then we have to think, what is the story we're telling with this? Because mm -hmm. what's going on somewhere may not really affect me. It may never affect me. Who knows? But the, there's that, well, they're doing this. They're doing this. I talked to a, a, a sibling of mine who has opinions on stuff. And I have to say, I don't have an opinion about that because I, there's nothing I can do about that now. Like, just really mm -hmm. keep it in the moment and keep with what is real. And kind mm -hmm. of finding, for me anyway, staying with what I know is real and not fear of the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That gave me chills, Sandy. That's so good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And then um, <clears throat> we don't know. I mean, in some ways, if you think about it, really life is uncertain in general, right? I mean, it's just kind of in our face now. But we weren't certain we were going to live another moment even three months ago. Right. And um, so I think, again, bringing it back to the present and what do you know, and then acting from there. Um, 
And, you know, kind of what Byron Katie talks about is like um, loving what is. So yeah. staying in the what is rather than in the, in the reality of the moment rather than um, kind of pushing the reality off and, or saying shoulds and coulds and, duh, and, you know, what ifs and those kind of things, because that's where the pain comes. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then the habits, right? What are the tools? Breathing, mm -hmm. stretching, getting some air, talking to someone you care about, whatever that is. Because what is it? Annie, Annie Lamont says, my mind is a dangerous place. I don't like to go there by myself or something <laughs> like that, right? It's, I'm, I'm, I'm really messing with the quote, but it is, oh, right? So go, get some perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Bring a friend, the kind of thing yeah, that bring yeah, a friend. Exactly. <laughs> bring a friend never, to your dark places. I find that quote, it is such a good quote. She's full it, of it. It really so. is. I know what you mean, but I can't, I can't say it. So, so far, we've touched on tiredness. We've touched on uncertainty. Let us know right now in the comments, what are you taking away? What's something that you're going to take away as an action you're going to take or a mindset you're going to try on? Also, feel free to pepper us with questions at this point. This is open to you. So let us know what is an action you're going to take and what are you going to, and what other questions you have. And as you're doing that, uh, Sandy, Kelly, and I'll go as well, what are each of you taking away from today, either on tiredness or on uncertainty and how to um, interact with them, deal with them? I'll go first because I've been listening, so I can go first. I, I uh, for me, I can, I really, really resonate with the comment of what's the story you're telling yourself? So if I'm seeing uncertainty, am I telling myself the story, this will never end, or I don't know what to do with the kids in school or this, or so uh, that is very helpful. And uh, just yesterday, Margarita Terragona spoke about stories. So that's very much in my mind. That's really, really helpful. Yeah, and I think for me, it is, it's that checking in. I don't like to do it very often. I'm much more of a person who likes to serve others and be there for everybody else. And then I like, Ugh. but it's, it's important, right? Because then if I check in, then I realize I am telling some sort of story. So slowing down and checking in is, is important. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, um, well, it, I loved all of it, but um, that's the stories I think really resonate. And then, and the, um, the waves and writing them, you know, the, and waves are natural, right? And so go with it. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Sandy, for saying that because it, it does make you feel better because I tell you, it does feel off when one moment to moment, the feelings change. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? That, there's a weather caster. I feel like it's Ohio or something. It starts out today is Wednesday, you know, because <laughs> we're our brains are so clouded with all yeah. this stuff going on. You know? This is the day of the week. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> That's really funny. That's really funny. Uh, we're having a couple of comments of, on actions people are going to take afterwards. And that somebody's saying the check-in with myself. What do I need? That regular check-in. What do I need now? We have a, com uh, a question for all of us, which is, what is your best self-care recommendation? I will go with breathe. I suggest breathe. The Brian Brannigan uh, the se session last Friday really made me think about that, just taking that. And actually, I saw a different webinar that also said, set your alarm for every hour or every 90 minutes at the longest and take literally three six-second in, six-second out deep breaths. So three breaths on the hour. So I I've been trying that since Brian's session a week ago. And I don't do it every hour. But when I do, oh, I'm here. This is OK. Things are good. Yeah. That's great. For me, it's, I find a way to ground myself. If I'm in a chair, it's somatic, right? I sit down, I feel the chair. It's 2020. I'm just in my chair. Or I'm, if I'm outside, I, I'll touch a tree. I'll hold a tree. I'll just stand and be on the ground, but just something to kind of pull me down and, and ground myself. And then I can breathe, but I can't do that before that. <laughs> nice. Nice comment. Yeah, I love that. You said that, Sandy, because I do, tr I do the breath, but it doesn't seem, that's not what grounds me. If I'm grounded and do the breath, then I'm, I'm all in. Yeah. So I'm going to go hug a tree, I think. <laughs> Try it. It's amazing. Try it. Let but me assure you. Have an alarm. 
I have an alarm set three times a day, 8, 30, 12, and I think five. And it just to, to um, center myself and to remind myself then to do the embodiment. Um, yeah. But I, it's funny because before I was going to even suggest that people can create your own list of go-tos, you know, what brings you joy? What makes you feel, yeah. like, what resets you? Um, you know, what brings you gratitude? You know, make that list. And then when you're like, oh, I need something, look at your list and pick Love one that. and do it. Bubble okay. baths are one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Revisit your list. I want to thank you, Sandy, and you, Kelly. Thank you so much. So we've hit three questions today. We touched on tiredness, uncertainty, and then self-care, our, our self-care mm -hmm. recommendation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so very much. And yeah, I wish yeah. this was so much fun. To go forward. So what are we all suggesting? We're suggesting breathe. We're suggesting get grounded. And then, Kelly, yours was also get grounded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. create your list to decide what is oh, right. the list, right? That's right. So yeah. if you aren't sure of what action to take, maybe you could choose from one of these. Breathe, get grounded, and create your list. So you can kind of re review it. And, oh, play music. Or, oh, take my nap. Do right. that. Right. Thank you so much. We look forward Thank to seeing you, you again on at 11 a.m. Pacific for 20 minutes. All of next week and the week after, we have awesome content for you, which we'll be posting here soon. Thank you so much. See you again. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Sam. Bye, 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 Kelly. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>